welcome to Reddit Aliens. A man once told me, if you want a good story, ask a random person if they've ever had anything unexplainable happen to them. Most people have had such an event. So, Reddit, do you have one such story? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I have a suspicion that I'm on the other end of a story like these. So back in high school, my friend and I liked to do what we called urban climbing, which essentially consisted of going out late at night and finding a way to climb onto the roof of one of the various schools scattered around my suburban neighborhood. We never vandalized anything, but it was fun to just hang out up there. One of the times we went a bit earlier than usual, it must have been somewhere between 10 and 11 at night, and we were sitting on the roof of the gym about two floors off the ground. The school had a flat roof with a short wall running along the edge so that if you lie flat, no one can see you from the ground. So, as we're just chilling, looking out over the neighborhood, we suddenly hear voices and take cover to make sure no one sees us and gets us in trouble. We quickly realize that this is not something we need to worry about as it appears to be a pack of high school students a few grades down from us, talking loudly and yelling to each other. This is where we get an evil idea. My friend has the ability to do an extremely eerie scream think black riders from Lord of the Rings. So we hide from view and he screams really loudly. The group instantly goes silent and he screams again. It takes about five seconds and then we hear what is probably someone setting a new land speed record in flip flops. I mean just booking it. We couldn't see them directly. There were trees in the way but we could hear the loud slapping noise their shoes were making. The fact that this sound carried over 300 feet through some trees should tell you how fast they were going. We almost gave away our position by laughing too hard. It was a good night. Late last year, I was snoozing in my room early in the morning when I stretched out in my bed, lying on my back. After about 10 seconds, I felt something tap the tip of my toe three times. I sat up in bed, looked around the room and saw nothing. Freaked out, I pulled myself into the fetal position and somehow managed to fall back asleep. Later that same day, Something told me not to stay in my room for the night, so I left the door open and slept in another room. My brother came home and decided to close my bedroom door. As he reached into my room for the handle, he said he heard something snarl at him. He slammed the door shut and came in racing into the room I was in, completely freaked out. I didn't sleep very well that night. I was once driving in the University District of Seattle, Washington in the middle of the night, probably 1am or so. It was just me and one passenger. We aren't from Seattle and were waiting at a light to make a U-turn to find the freeway again. We were the only car at the intersection, but we waited about three minutes while the light was red. As soon as our light turned green, a huge marching band, presumably UWs, began to march across the intersection and into the lane we wanted to turn into at 1am. Every single member was in costume and they were not playing their instruments. It was incredibly eerie and my passenger and I were just sitting there open-mouthed. We both remembered exactly the same, but it was one of those memories that you think, did that actually happen? Now that was cool, but well, pretty random. The first two years I went to college, I still lived with my parents, so I had to commute about an hour each way. I had a killer final at about 10 a.m. You know the final where you're going to need every second and the instructor even warns everyone not to be late? For some dumb reason, I was running late. I figured I would be from 20 to 30 minutes late, but I'm a good test taker, so I might still be able to turn it around. Now my parents live in the foothills, and the college is in a valley. When I hit the valley, I also hit a wall of fog so dense that I could barely see the road 10 feet in front of the car. If you've ever experienced tool fog, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's not unheard of in our area to get 30 and 40 car pileups as a result of this dense fog. I had to slow my pace to a crawl and peer and strain just to make out the yellow line so I would not cross over and be on the wrong side of the road. My speed went from about 65 to about 20, and that was as fast as I could reasonably go. I was super stressed and mentally cursing myself for not considering the possibility that I might run into problems on the way to school, and running through my mind different ways of begging my professor for extra time. I was so stressed I took a wrong turn and found myself somewhat lost. I did not recognize the streets I was on. It's an agricultural area, so there are not really any landmarks to speak of, just roads and fields of trees or crops. I was fairly confident 
I was going in the right direction at least, so I kept on, and after a bit of trial and error taking this road and that, I eventually found myself on a road I recognized the name of, and eventually found my way into town to my university. I was almost literally sweating bullets though. I did not wear a watch, but I knew from when I left, and all the extra time I sucked up, creeping through that fog, that I was going to be at least an hour late. I figured the best course of action was to go to the class and throw myself on the mercies of the professor. At least the fog was a reasonable excuse. I got there, and there was no one there. I cursed and fumed, figuring that I had missed the final entirely. Then I checked the clock in the classroom. I was half an hour early. I've run this thing through my head hundreds of times. There's no rational explanation for how this could have happened. I accidentally time traveled. Okay, well, one, poor time management, but that's okay. Two, it's good of you that you slowed down in the fog considering you were late. And three, maybe daylight savings time? I don't know. A few summers ago, I was prospecting camping with my SO and his dad in a national forest in southern Oregon. Our claim was miles away from the nearest town up some truly scary forestry roads. We set up camp close to a stream in a big clearing. One night, we were playing cards and I heard an almost guttural scream. SO and his dad had been drinking and they were being so loud they missed it. After getting them to shut up for a second, I heard the scream again, but from a different location. The second scream sounded more feminine or something like that. Anyways, that night we heard what sounded like someone putting their arms in the stream and lifting them out over and over again. I kid you not, it sounded like something was effing washing something in the stream. We also had rocks thrown at our tent. This was the worst night of my life. I'd never been so scared. It's worse because I can't put reason behind any of those occurrences. Still the craziest effing thing I've ever seen. I was 13 or so with my dad camping by the Kern River. We had met this dude Jeff, who we became fishing buddies with, and he ended up setting up camp with us at our site. Well, one night we're sitting around telling stories, and my dad gets tired and goes to bed. So then it's just me and this dude talking, telling stories, etc. Everything's going fine when I look up to see a white fuzzy ball around the size of a volleyball coming towards us. At first your brain does the checklist, animal, garbage blowing, balloon, etc. It doesn't sink. Jeff, what's that? I asked. Jeff looked up at this thing, slowly coming towards us, clearly floating several inches off the ground. I don't know, he trailed off. It came closer and closer to our fire. I remember it was moving the grass, but only the tops of the grass were pushed down as it came along its path. Our conversation, meanwhile, was stuck on repeat. Jeff, what is that? I don't know. Jeff, what is that thing? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. By now, it had come right up to our fire. It was solid, but the edges were diffused, like fuzzed out. We were like three feet from it. It stopped going right into the flames, went around to the opposite side we were sitting on, and then floated right on up the hill and disappeared over the top onto the road. At this point, we were both just sitting there breathing heavily. After a few minutes, we got up to look for it, ran up to the road, but it was gone. My dad told me on the car ride home, if Jeff hadn't seen the same thing, he never would have believed me. I will never, ever know what that thing was, ever, and it bothers me to this day. Okay, I have one that I've stopped telling because really, no one believed me. So my best friend and I were hanging out on Halloween night about six years ago. It was late, trick-or-treaters had gone home and there was nobody awake on the street, but we were still hanging out in her driveway, just looking at the stars, chatting a little, but mostly silent. I had my head cranked towards the heavens when she nudged me. Look. She pointed across the street. I had trouble making out what she was showing me, but I saw it eventually. It was small, cylindrical light, floating around 10 feet from the asphalt. It wasn't stationary, but sort of moved with the breeze. It was emitting a faint golden glow, very pretty, almost the size of a glow stick. We watched it for a while. She amazed me, scared witless, before it did a little circle in the air and disappeared upwards. Shortly after that, we saw another floating light, but this time it was a purplish blue sphere, about the size of a tennis ball. It was moving faster than the previous light, and as we watched, it pitched itself forward so that it zoomed past our heads and into her neighbor's side yard, which was visible from where we were standing. The light it gave off reflected on the pale stucco wall, so even though we couldn't see the object, it was still there. Eventually it faded, leaving me scared shitless and her more curious than I liked. I dragged her back inside before we were abducted or something. The only unbelievable thing that's ever happened to me. 
When my mom was in her 20s, she went on a six month boat trip with her boyfriend and other friend. One night, they were just sitting at the front of the boat and they saw a light in the sky. It was glowing brighter and brighter and then shrank down to a small dot in the sky. It then zoomed off into the sky. The next day, an army boat was passing by and asked them if they had seen anything strange and they told them. The army men told my mom that it was just them practicing shooting missiles. However, it was the only army boat they ever saw during their whole six month trip. She still says she doesn't believe it was army practice. Well, it might not have been an alien spacecraft, but by the sound of that, it's definitely not a missile. This is going to be buried under all the comments, but this is my unexplainable encounter. I was obviously too young at the time to remember any of this, but my parents told me about it and my older brother and sister both confirm it. When I was just under two years old, we started renting a crappy, tiny little house out in the boonies. Shortly after we moved in, I started having awful nightmares, something I'd never suffered from before. I would wake up screaming, fireman, fireman, and point out the window. Obviously, since we were in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere, there were no firemen outside, nor did my parents recall me ever being scared by sirens, fires, firemen before. The nightmares and fear were new and inexplicable. We moved a lot back then and did not live in the house for more than five or six months, but I had the nightmares consistently the whole time we lived there. After we moved, they stopped immediately. Years later, we had moved again to another town 30 minutes or so away. My mom stayed friendly with several people from the small town we'd moved from and was visiting with one of them. Somehow, the topic turned to the house we rented and my mom mentioned how it hadn't been a great place to live for a lot of reasons, but she also happened to mention my nightmares. The woman she was visiting was horrified and proceeded to tell my mom that the previous owner of the home had been a raging alcoholic who had either accidentally or intentionally set himself on fire after building a campfire in the side yard. He had died from his injuries. The place where he had burned to death was the same place I pointed to every time I had the nightmare. I wasn't terrified of firemen. I was terrified of the fireman, the one I somehow saw outside the house every night, self-immolating. I have two interesting stories, and they're both almost the same. I had this really intense and vivid dream that involved hills of broken red rock and a cabin. I ran to the cabin because there were zombies everywhere. I get into the cabin and find my best friend in there with a trunk full of guns. He wordlessly hands me a shotgun, and the rest of my dream is a total zombie kill fest. I woke up and ran over to my buddy's place just like most school free days. I was so totally pumped from my awesome dream that I couldn't wait to tell him about it. Well, when I get to his place, he's all shaken up and looks like hell. He told me that he had this horrible nightmare about being trapped in a little shack in this place all made of broken red rock and he had to fight off zombies all night long with me until we were back to back unloading with shotguns like crazy. I had never heard of dream sharing until that day. This happened a few years ago, maybe four or five. I was watching Lost in the Living Room in my house, home alone with just my dog. Suddenly, I hear the back door open and then close in the kitchen. My dog lifts her head up and stares into the hallway. From where I was sitting, I couldn't see into the kitchen, neither could my dog. I paused Lost and said, hey who's home, with no reply. Then I heard footsteps moving toward the living room stopping just outside in the hall. I got up and slowly poked my head around the corner and nobody was there. Friends and family would tell me about other creepy things that happened to them in that house too. My aunt was sleeping in the basement living room when she woke up and opened her eyes and screamed. She claimed she saw a kid just sitting on her chest staring into her eyes. Then she closed her eyes and he was gone. I had several friends over another time in the same room my aunt slept in. Everyone passed out wherever they could so several people were laying on the floor. One of my friends told me he was laying down on the floor trying to sleep when he heard the door open and small footsteps running towards him. He looked up and saw nothing. My mom has weird stories too. She says she woke up one morning and saw an old woman sitting at the end of her bed talking to herself. I have a few more, but I'm too tired to write them now and I doubt they'll get read anyway. I have two, one I directly witnessed, one I didn't. The first is my mom's. Back in the 70s, she lived in an old house in uptown New Orleans that had been converted to apartments. Weird stuff used to always happen, like she would come home from work and her dresser would have been moved to the opposite side of the room. Everyone that had a key to her apartment, landlord, etc., denied entering or touching anything. Well, 
One night she was sleeping when she felt someone crawl into bed next to her. No one was there. She moved out after that. The second happened at my aunt's wedding, which was held at my house. My aunt was getting married for the first time at the age of 51. My grandmother, her mom, had died approximately 16 years earlier. All day weird stuff kept happening, like doors flying open and then suddenly getting stuck shut. The strangest was when the doorbell, which had been disconnected for months, kept repeatedly ringing. My aunt chalked it up to grandma, making her presence known. I mean, grandma wanted to check that out, so good for her, right? When I was maybe 11 or so, I was spending some quality time with my brother. Him and I were close, but it was rare that we ever just sit around and talk about life. We have a swing set that my father had constructed for us. My brother and I sat on the swings and spoke to each other. We didn't swing, we just rested and enjoyed the weather. It was very nice, until the peacefulness was interrupted by an indescribable noise. The best interpretation I could give you all is a blood-curdling, human-feline hybrid sounding scream. It had torn the silence and calm chatter in a split second. Him and I shot up and turned around to try to figure out what it had been. We found our German Shepherd barking like crazy at something in a tree. I'd never seen her in so much defense. Seconds later, whatever she was growling at had lost its grip and fallen from said tree. At this moment, my heart had dropped. Unable to get a good look at the thing, I had depicted it to look like a large, hairy, black feline. Nothing native to central Ohio. The one attribute that stuck out the most? It was the exact size of our full-grown German Shepherd. It stumbled upward and darted down the woods yelping and screeching, thus climbing up another tree. My brother and I, in unison, glared at each other, wide-eyed, and sprinted to our home. We returned five minutes or so later, and nothing was there. To this day, I haven't been able to figure out what the hell that creature was. It most certainly was nothing I've ever seen, or my brother. <laughs>